What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is of course Catman Joe, and welcome back to another brand new 7 Days to Die video on my channel. Well, you've already titled, there might be a delay in the release of the new 7 Days to Die console edition. What? What the fuck? Now hold your horses before you start typing an angry comment to the fun pimps because for once this is actually not on them. Today I'm going to be going over all this news and more information regarding it so that you are fully informed on what is going on. So just an hour ago the official 7 Days to Die Twitter account tweeted out saying the following. Hey survivors, we have officially submitted a gold master candidate build to Sony and Microsoft and the game is in the submission process. If we pass, July 25th will be the launch date on these formats. Stay tuned. Additionally, they also attached this photo right here showing the console editions had been submitted and exactly what time they were submitted and obviously of course showing that they are now in the certification process. So the good news is that the fun pimps have submitted the console 1.0 version of 7 Days to Die and if everything goes correctly we will be playing it on the 25th of July. But the bad news is that if either Sony or Microsoft find any problems that somehow managed to slip past the fun pimps and were missed and are also somehow obviously big enough to make some big problems then we might have to wait a little longer than we expected for the console version to release. Now if you're not a game developer like myself you probably are curious as to what exactly submitting a gold master candidate bill means and well from doing my research googling and looking through reddit a gold master is a release candidate milestone which passes all of a publisher and platform's requirements it is considered the finished game locked and ready to be reproduced and sold gold masters are not necessarily bug free but bugs that they contain are generally not considered serious enough to block production i did find a really interesting reddit post on r slash game design from a user called liam moz which i'll have linked down below where he shared the progress of game development from pre-alpha to gold master now i'm not going to read the entire post don't worry but i am going to share a few select parts that I handpicked where he actually talks about hardware submissions as I think it will help us understand what is potentially going on right now. So in regards to hardware submissions he begins by saying this. It's always important to make sure a game is running properly on the hardware it is designed to run on. Imagine creating a game for your favourite console only to find out it does not run on the console or it runs so slowly that the game is unplayable. This phase usually but not always involves devs patching a finished as in bug free beta build to console hardware manufacturers or PC hardware specific testers. In the case of PC games there is no official regulator and hardware checks are purely voluntary on the part of the developer slash publisher. However, in regards to console game testing, he says this. Console games all undergo certification by the respective manufacturer of the consoles. For example, Wii games are approved by Nintendo and so on. These involve similar checks to the CFW program and many more to ensure that software meets the high standards maintained slash expected on these systems. These kind of console checks can be very exacting. They define things like how many seconds a black screen should be visible for and how the console should react to someone pulls a controller slash joypad out etc. Achieving approval on consoles can be a fairly intense period for all involving a high awareness of guidelines published by the respective console manufacturers. The submission process itself involves preparing a build that the development team think will be approved by the manufacturer and then actually sending that build to the manufacturer. Review times vary wildly depending on the importance of the developer or how busy the manufacturer is, though a couple of weeks is not unusual. If the build is approved, great. If not, issues are corrected and the cycle repeats costing more time and money. When all hardware tests are passed slash finished and the QA team has performed all test related tasks then the final product is the master candidate. This is the almost finished product only missing a few tweaks. The game undergoes a final build and a new set of tests are performed mainly to ensure that corrections have not messed up features which worked previously. It is at this point that versions copy protection systems are applied to make the software harder to copy for people like pirates that is. This is optional but must be done before burning a gold master disc to make copies that will be put on sale. With all that being said it's hard to imagine Sony or Microsoft will delay the new console version of 7 Days to Die especially when we remember that these very exacting tests were most likely the exact same tests that let the Telltale version get released back in 2016. And of course, we all know how broken that version was. However, of course, it is still a possibility. So until we get confirmation from the fun pimps of it being passed, I'd highly recommend keeping your expectations low, but here's hoping we get some good news soon. And with that all being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did go to enjoy it, please share it with your friends and family, drop it a like, and leave a comment letting me know whether you think the game will be delayed or not. Also, lastly, be sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell to stay notified when I release any new content regarding Sim Days to Die, which I do have a lot of stuff planned going forward. And other than that, thank you once again for watching, and hopefully I'll see you later on.